This is just a short little video on fasting in response to some queries and contacts that we've had from people who are unfamiliar with the term or who are wanting to step into it for the first time. And so here goes. I don't know if you have ever been so engrossed in what you're doing that you have uh, skipped a meal. It might be at work, you might have been in the garden or at a sports event, you've come to the end of the day and you have recognized that you have skipped lunch. That happens to me quite a bit. I get so focused on what I'm doing that I unintentionally skip a meal. Well, fasting is not an unintentional skipping of a meal. It is an intentional decision. And I love how John Piper gives us a definition of what Christian fasting is. He says it's a temporary forfeiting of something that in itself is good, like food, in order to intensify our expression of our need for God and his work in our lives. And I really do like that definition. You know, fasting is not formulaic. It's not about if I do this, God, you will do that. It's not about impressing other people. Uh, Jesus gives us that warning in Matthew 6 when he says fast so that no one else knows or notices because this is between you and God. And it's also not a replacement for faith in Jesus Christ. Fasting in itself will not save. Only faith in Jesus Christ and his grace and mercy and love will. But yet fasting is to be done for a God-centered purpose. Most times in the New Testament that I have read is that fasting is in response to a profound situation or something that is profound that profoundly occurring in the lives of an individual or a body of Christ. In Acts 13, we read when the leaders were at Antioch and they were gathered together, they were worshipping and fasting. And then the Holy Spirit oppressed upon them to set apart Barnabas and Saul for God's work. And so after praying, they did so. In Acts 14, after returning to Antioch, Paul and Barnabas were looking to appoint elders. And it says they prayed and fasted, and then they committed them to the Lord in whom they trusted. You see, within those two bits of scripture, we see that fasting is to be partnered with something. It's to be partnered with prayer because fasting strengthens our prayer and helps us pray with clarity rather than being distracted uh, by by food and, and when it comes to fasting. It's to be partnered with the reading of God's word because that brings insight and clarity and it's to be partnered with worship, which is placing God at the highest place in our lives. You see, without those things, it's not really Christian fasting. It's probably just going hungry. And so the purpose of fasting is to look at responding to something that is happening in the lives of us as an individual or corporately, and to express our need for God and his work in our lives in those places. Sometimes fasting can occur as a result of recognizing that we are actually out of step with what God has for us in our lives, and that we are not living as he would require us. And so therefore it acts like a, an, uh, the, the concept of repentance. Sometimes fasting can be when we've got a, a really tricky situation before us, a decision to make, and we really want to seek God's guidance and wisdom and input into that decision. Other times it's interceding in prayer on behalf of a loved one or a family member who has a significant issue that they have going on or we want to see them come to know Jesus. Other times prayer and fasting can be about calling upon the name of Jesus Christ when we feel the intensity of the spiritual battle and it's recognizing that it's not about flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, and there is only one power that can step into that battle, and that is Jesus Christ, the power of Jesus Christ. But fasting, ultimately, is a response to our longing and need for Jesus. And it recognizes that there is a hunger within us that can only be filled by a relationship with Jesus and expressing that uh, we need God and we need his work in our lives over and above the earthly desires that we have, such as food. Remembering that Jesus said, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me, whoever has a relationship with me, whoever uh, places me at the center of their life, will never be hungry. And so when it comes to fasting, there are some small little practical tips that I'd just like to give you at the present point of time. The first one is start small. We do read in scripture that Jesus had a 40-day fast, and we wouldn't suggest that, but start small with your fast. It might be skipping a particular meal or one meal, but start small. Second thing is plan for what you're going to do instead of uh, the time you have otherwise invested in sitting down and eating. 
you know fasting for that particular day might be that you would take the time you would otherwise sit down at the dinner table to go into the lounge sit down read the word of god pray and worship him but be intentional about how you're going to use that time and thirdly it might be that you need to have a partial fast maybe for medical reasons or for some other reason fasting from food is not possible so maybe fasting from coffee fasting from screen time maybe fasting from hot drinks would be most appropriate for you but again use the time that you've created for the purpose of expressing to god your need for him and wanting to see his work in your life so that's just a little summary of how we see the importance of fasting and how you might be able to outwork that in your life and so as we come to our prayer and fasting night on the 4th of May, we'd like to invite you to join with us as we pray specifically into a couple of areas. First of all, that we want God to strengthen our foundations. We recognize that as a church, prayer is paramount, that Christ is central, and we want to love God and we want to love people and we want to ask God to continue to strengthen those foundations within us individually, but as a body of Christ. Secondly, we have a profound uh, transition happening in the space of our leadership and we want to allow God to speak into that and guide us. So please be praying into that during this time. We are also recognizing the intensity of the spiritual battle and we sense the growing battle of ideas that are rallying against Christian um, essentials and we look to pray into that. We also recognize the intensity of the spiritual battle as our buildings are progressing and we want to cover those in prayer. Fourthly, we want to come to the Lord and just honor him, to worship him, come with hearts of gratitude as a response to what he has done and come thanking him for bringing us through last year, 2020, but also thanking him for what he has, he has planned and his plans are for us now and into the future. And so we'd invite you to come along, be a part of that, pray and fast during the day on those items. Come and join us 7.30 at the Hope Hornby site as we gather, as we look to express our need for God and his work in our lives as individuals, but also as a church. So we trust that that has helped you unpack a little bit more what fasting is. If you have any queries or questions, please let us know. We'd love to talk with you. Blessings.